I grew up in a really, really crazy family, so art was really, when, I was, when everybody was going crazy downstairs, I would just go up in my room with a ballpoint pen and some typing paper and, you know, um, create my own world, and, you know, and it all made sense to me up there, you know. I was trained as an illustrator, and the illustration teachers always said, Fred, these textures are beautiful, but they're not going to show up, and, and, you know, when, when it's reproduced, so I, I switched to fine arts. Um, I, I start my painting with a random glob. When I scrape my palette off, I save the paint. And then I just, I'll mix it with like some gesso or some oil paint. And I just, I'll really will start it off often with just a random glob. Like, like this, was, this was just a random glob, this texture here. And it, it, it's just a jumping off thing for this. Mm -hmm. Just this cool stuff here, right? And you mix, look, that's pretty cool though, isn't it? Um, just kind of mix it, and I think it's almost like my dad saying, you know, it seems like a fellow should be able to do something with this, you know, don't throw it away. And I've always just kind of scraped it right off on the side. And it gives it, it gives it sort of a, more of a feel of an object, I think, you know. I think that's what maybe the texture is quite a bit about, too. There were times when I painted the bear in the dark. I, mean, I, I could just get the street light coming in, yeah. but I would sit back here and look at it, painting on this wall, and it would just sort of like come out. It was amazing. And so I would just walk up with a brush and, and um, just fill in where it was coming out. I think Robert Henry said the, 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 the nose, you know, he was a very dramatic dude, uh, the nose should advance like a soldier, you know, and I, just, I kept thinking about that when I was painting that bear, oh yeah. I've, I've worked with um, psychiatric people, made like slash art, therapy, teaching with psychiatric people and uh, really fragile little kids for like 25 years. And I think watching them too um, convinced me that there's, I mean, what they did was just so pure and honest, it was amazing. I mean, I could, I, there was a one point where I could not figure out how this girl would get these beautiful lines. And so I would have her paint on the walls and I mean, we did put the canvas on the wall and she would just make, make these beautiful lines and I was talking to her, I said, and then um, and she turned around and started talking to me, but she never stopped painting. <laughs> I think that's, there was something too that just like clicked, I don't know, you know. But that really, that really affected me a lot, is working with these guys. We would always take down the paper, and then we would rub charcoal into the paper, and I would give them old typewriter erasers or erasers, and we would just start drawing with the eraser. And that way if they made, they said, Fred, you know, I really screwed up. We would just like rub it back in and they would start over. And I started doing that with them and I came home and said, well, I can, I can do that here. So it's kind of like drawing in reverse. You, you cover the thing in black and then just start taking it away. They, they seem like they start off in a, kind of a dark place. Mm -hmm. And then I, it's, I, I trust my emotions more than I do my intellect, that's for sure. I often think about Carson McCullers, Flannery O'Connor, pretty dark things sometimes. Um, I think that was a big influence on me too. I really got into them in, like in the late 70s, early 80s. Oftentimes I'll have a, an image in mind, you know, like I knew this was going to be a bear. I didn't know it was going to have three eyes, but I mean, the girl has a couple, she has like two sets of eyes. <laughs> it's a little twist, you know, a lot of overlapping thing, like the landscape in her shoulder there. Well, Chris Martin said, he, he, he's, he, was, he did, um, he studied psychology and he said that a landscape rising up in the left shoulder means a search for your whole. And I never knew that, but you know, that's what she has and that's what a number of them have. So, you know, I just, if I get in there and think about it too much, I'll just muck things up, you know, I really will. My paintings are a lot smarter than I am, that's for sure. You know, my paintings and drawings are a lot smarter than I am. But I sort of look at my, what I do, it's almost like a film score, you know, where there's there might be a dark, broody sort of passage, and then it might be a little bit, a bit upbeat, you know. I've always looked at my work as that, or just maybe schizophrenic, like a, 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 a three-person show, you know. Speaking of crazy painters, one of the items I'm making in a gift shop is, it's a little box with a severed ear in it. It's like, sort oh, of like, yeah, no. yeah, just, just oh. so you give it to somebody that you love. <laughs> oh, honey, that's so nice. <laughs>